I'm gonna show you how to work way more efficiently using SharePoint lists. They don't sound that exciting, do they? But they can actually do quite a lot. You can use them to track so many different things such as company assets, project tasks, risks, and even your shopping list. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to easily create a risk register using conditional formatting and automatically calculated sales. Let's take a look. It's super easy to get started with creating a SharePoint list. First thing you need to do is go onto the homepage of the SharePoint site where you would like the list to live. So let's click on new at the top here and click on list. So if you do already have a list, you could actually try importing it from Excel or a CSV file. And there's also a significant number of different templates that you can use to get started, such as Asset Manager. So here's a preview of the template. And you can see in this template, we have got photographs of the device, the asset tag, and we've got different statuses that are color coded, information about the asset, date columns, and we can also see who it's currently assigned to. This will actually integrate with Microsoft 365 and look at the users there, allowing you to actually add a Microsoft 365 user. You can customize this if you decide to use that template, but we're gonna start from scratch to create our risk register. So let's go to create from blank and click on list and then create. So let's call this risk register. Um, now you get this option at the bottom here. Do you want to show this list in your site navigation? Now you may want to hold off if this is a live site in adding this to the navigation once the list has been finalized. But in this case, this isn't a live site. So I'm gonna tick it now. So it adds it to the navigation on the left-hand side automatically for me. So let's click the create button and that has now created my list. So the next thing I wanna do is create some columns. So we've got this title column here that's created by default. I don't really want to use that. So I'm going to click on this, click on column settings and rename the column. And I'm just gonna rename that to risk description. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna put the description of the risk. And I'm gonna add another column here for the risk ID number. So we get the option to select a different column type. So I'm gonna click on number and then click next. And we're gonna call this risk ID. Uh, you can add a description so that when people filling out this form get a bit more information about what you're expecting them to input. So I could explain here that this should be the next number in the sequence from the last risk ID number. You can use Microsoft Power Automate to build an automation workflow that would automatically increment the numbers, but we're not gonna do that in this video. We're just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna set the type to number. We don't need decimal places in our risk ID number. So we're gonna click on zero and we're not gonna enter a default number. Don't need a thousand separator. Minimum allowed value, we want the minimum risk to be one and we do want to require that this column contains information. So that's going to force people to enter a value in the column there. It won't allow them to create an entry into this list without populating that column. Now for any optional columns, you do not want to be toggling this on. Now this enforced unique values is going to come in handy here because we don't want people using the same unique risk ID. So let's click on that and let's click save. There we go, I want my risk ID column to be the first column, so I'm just gonna click on that and drag it across. So we've got risk ID and risk description. The next thing I want to create is categories for my risk. So if I click on add column and let's click on choice and click next. So what we're gonna do here is define various different risk categories. Now don't worry, you can come back and edit this later on to create different risk categories or even rename categories that you've already created. So let's just call this category. Now you can change the colors on the right hand side here. It's generally not a good idea to have a category in a risk register for red. Red would generally indicate it's a more significant risk, which we don't necessarily feel is the case with this category. So I'm just gonna change that color to orange and we don't really want a default value. We want people to think about it. If you enter a default value, run the risk of people just using that and not really thinking about the category. 
Now, in a risk registry, there are way more categories than this, but we're going to just keep it simple for the demonstration today. Now, we do not want to allow multiple selections in this case, and we do want to require that it contains information. We don't want this to be a unique value because otherwise that would stop people using the same category more than once. So let's click on save, and that is our category column. I now want to add a likelihood and impact column, which is going to be a number column. But we're going to need to format these ones a little differently because I'm going to use a system of scoring between one and five. So let's click on number and click on next. And let's call this likelihood. So it's going to be pretty important that I add a description here so people understand the scoring system. So let's put one equals low, three equals medium, and five equals high. We need that to be a number. We don't want any decimal places here, so I'm going to set that to zero. We don't want a default value again because we want people to think about what they're putting in here. A thousand separators is not really going to be relevant. I'm going to turn that off anyway. And we can define a minimum and maximum allowed value. So because I'm entering a score between one and five, I can put one as my minimum allowed value and five as the maximum. And let's toggle this on to require that this column contains information. Again, we don't want to use this unique values enforcement here. So double check what we've put in here. Yes, that looks correct. Okay, let's hit save. So if we come into add a column, click number, we're going to set this up in exactly the same way. Impact. I pretty want to talk a bit about what I actually mean by this, what, you know, what I mean by likelihood and impact. But let's just put in one is low. Three is medium, five is high. We want that to be a number. We don't want any decimal places. Don't want the thousand separator at minimum and maximum values here. And we want to set this as a required column. So let's click on save. Here's where we start configuring a bit of automation. I want to create a risk score column that automatically calculates the risk score based on the likelihood and the impact. Let's take a look at how we do that. So to do that, whilst you've got your list open, you need to click on settings in the top right and then click on list settings. If we then look to see our columns here and click create a new column and I'm going to call this risk score. And the type you want to set is calculated. Here we go. And in our formula, what we want to do is we want to add together the impact and likelihood and divide it by two to give us the risk score. So the formula is equals and then sum, and then we're going to start a bracket there. And then you can select your columns here. So we're going to select likelihood. And to add them together, you don't use the plus symbol. You need to use a comma. So I'm going to type in a comma, and then I'm going to click on impact. And then we're going to just close our brackets there. And then we use a backslash to divide. So I'm going to divide that by two. So that's adding together likelihood and impact and then dividing it by two. In terms of the type of data returned, we want that to return a number. And in terms of decimal places, we could end up with some decimal places here. So I'm going to set that to automatic, or we can set that to just one decimal place. And that is everything. So let's click on OK. And let's go back to our risk register. So let's just test this out, test how we've done so far. So if we click on Add New Item, the risk description is, um, come on, may all victim to a phishing scam, which results in their email being compromised. Okay, risk ID one, category is going to be email. Likelihood, I'm going to say that's pretty high, and impact is going to be also pretty high. Just give that a four, and let's click on save. There we go. So I can see that has added automatically my risk score as 4.5. So now we're going to talk about controls. So in a risk register, you typically talk about the risk score, you then talk about what controls that you've got, and then we look at the residual risk. So let's add a column here, which is just going to be text or multiple lines of text if we want to probably want to add a fair bit of detail in here. So let's do that. Let's select multiple lines of text. Click next and put controls. And then in the description, let's add a bit of information, detail, look, and controls. 
currently in place to mitigate the risk. Um, we don't actually want to require this contains information because you may not have any controls. So let's click on save. To go back and edit an item that you've already created, you can just click on it and edit it here. Okay, so let's now come out of that and close it. And now I'm gonna add my residual likelihood, residual impact, and my final risk score. We're then gonna add our conditional formatting. Okay, so I've now added my residual risk, likelihood, impact, and the score, again, using the calculation. So these are configured exactly the same way as these three columns. Finally, I'm just gonna add a column with notes so we can talk about progress or action plans that have been made. So again, we're gonna add text. We're gonna add, we're gonna just call this notes. We're gonna allow this to be multiple lines of text and we're not going to require that this contains information. So let's click on save and here we are. So if you want to delete an item from a list, you can just click on it and then click on delete. Once we've configured the conditional formatting, we will put in some test risks. Okay, so let's add some conditional formatting. So we want to really add a color coding system to likelihood, impact, and our risk score. For now, I'm just gonna show you how to do that for the risk score column, because it's gonna be exactly the same as these other ones. So let's click on risk score click on column settings and click format this column. So let's go to conditional formatting and add a rule. You get quite a lot of different options here. You can actually format this column based on the entries in another column, but we want to actually look at the value in this column. So let's click on risk score and then we've got various options here. We're gonna say if the risk score is greater than four, we want that to go red. And let's create another rule to say if the risk score is less than two, we want to set that to green. Let's add another rule and let's use the yellow and let's go with risk score is equal to two or if risk score greater than two, And if risk score is less than 4.5, we want to show them as this. Okay, right, let's give that a test. So let's create a new item in our risk register. So let's just use the phishing example again and let's hit save. So now that you've created this, you can do all sorts of filtering and grouping. So for example, we could sort by risk score, larger to smaller, there we go. Or we could sort by the residual risk, larger to smaller, which is probably the figures we're more interested in. The other thing you can do is group by category. So if you want to look at everything just for email, for example, we can click group by category and I can see all the email risks there together, all the physical risks together and all the cloud risks together. To turn that off, you click back under category and uncheck group by category. Now, now that you've created this list, you can actually add it within a page on the site. So if we go back onto the home page. Let's say we want that to be embedded in this page. So we edit the page and let's click on the, let's just add a full width section at the top. So add one column. And then if you just type in list and I can now select the risk register and that has added it to the page. Just republish the page and there it is. So people can now interact with it on this page. They can select different risks and delete them. They can edit the risks. And this highlights the importance of considering permissions on your list because maybe you don't want everyone to be able to add, edit, or delete items from the list. Let's take a look at how we configure that. Now to edit the permissions, you need to actually go back to the risk register. You can't edit the permissions from within the page widget. And if you've forgotten to add it to your navigation menu or you haven't done that yet, the way to find your list is clicking on the site settings at the top and then clicking on site contents. Okay, so here is our risk register. So we just wanna click on that and that's now opened it. I can copy the URL there and add it to the menu if I haven't done that already. So let's click on settings and list settings and then permissions for this list. 
Okay, so this by default is inheriting permissions from the SharePoint site. So the same permissions that are applied to the HR SharePoint site are applied to this risk register. We don't want everyone in HR to be able to edit the risks. I can click stop inheriting permissions. So that's no longer inheriting the permissions from the SharePoint site. And I can now customize this. So let's say visitors, they can have read access. We're okay with that. And members of the site, we don't want them to have edit access. So we just wanna tick this and then click edit user permissions. And we're gonna change that to read and click on okay. And if you then want to add a group of people, so the risk management team, for example, we can, to be able to edit it, we can click on grant permissions. I can enter the names of people, or I can enter the name of a security group, which would be better practice. And I can set their permission level and click on save. So I'm just gonna add my colleague, Wesley, and I want to send him an email invitation and I want him to have edit access. So let's click on share. And if I just refresh the page, I can now see Wesley listed there. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching.